Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome again to a, yet another update. I'm hoping we get to a point where there aren't any updates anymore, where I can, where we're all here enough that we know what's going on around here. But in the meantime, we'll remain patient and we'll continue to pray and hope and trust in God. So let's begin with that prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you for all the gifts that you give us and for the safety and the health that you continue to give to most all of us. We pray for those who are stricken with this virus and for our family members who are depressed or lonely or anxious or feel isolated. We ask that you be with them, fill them with your love. Please, Lord, continue to give us all the gift of patience as we wait, hope, and trust in you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, first of all, for those of you who are worried about my dress, uh, you can see I have another jacket on. How's that? I don't have that royal blue jacket on this time. And uh, it's still Prince of Peace, but I, I got a new jacket. So uh, I wanted you to feel better about me for those of you who are so worried about my wardrobe. Uh, so I got, I've got that going for me now. So you don't have to worry about things. We're, we're going to be okay going forward. I would like to, first of all, speak with you right from my heart. Uh, you know, there's a great thing about technology. When we live stream masses on Facebook on Sunday and during the week, we can see at least some rough numbers of what people of who are watching. You know, we they're probably inflated because people can just be on there for a few seconds and get off. But uh, we, with the, especially with the Sunday mass, initially had a lot of people viewing. Uh, you know, close to two thousand on a weekend. And that has dropped off considerably. Uh, it's down to around 800. Now, I realize there are other options for people to watch. They could watch the Mass on television. And a lot of people will skip around to other parishes to what they are live streaming. And I understand all that. But when the numbers cut in half, and I'm writing about this in the bulletin this week, you'll read in my corner, I'm a little concerned that people, as the longer this goes on, the people who were, shall I say, lukewarm in their faith or on the fringes are now comfortable with being away from God and are saying, hey, you know what, I don't need that. So I'm hoping that we can pray for those people. And if you know of anybody, especially people in our parish who were engaged maybe initially and have now fallen away, um, if you could work with them. I, my wife and I played golf a few weeks ago with uh, a couple of people. One of them was a parishioner, and she had no idea what we were doing around here, that we were actually open. Um, so those kind of things worry me. And I, I really, as the longer this goes on, I'm concerned about people who, not you, who are watching here all the time and watching Mass, but the people who aren't engaged, uh, that you know, you know, people who would come to Mass once in a while as a convenience, not as something that they felt they needed. Um, those are the people I'm worried about and I, I want to pray for. So I hope we can all pray for those people that they don't uh, continue to fall away from their faith and, and think that they can solve everything in the world right now by themselves and they don't need God. So please... Let's pray for them, and if, we, if you know of anybody in that situation, talk to them and help them so that they can feel the need for God in their life. Okay, that's enough, right? Um, you know, earlier in, the, in these talks, we had made phone calls to everyone in the parish who was on our list. So we made over 1,500 phone calls. There were... 30 or so people that did that. It was wonderful. But there were a lot of people that we could not get hold of. We, we left messages. Uh, we called back, left another message, did not get a response. So 
we then resorted to sending out a letter. So we have now sent out 650 letters to people who we called more than once and left messages and they did not respond. We are getting uh, some people who are responding right away to say, yep, here's my updated information. I'm still with the parish. But we have a lot of people who aren't responding. So going into this, we had 1,550 families right around that number who were considered to be members of this parish. And I suspect that, that number will drop maybe considerably based on this. And that's okay. I, if people aren't coming here, aren't engaged, and uh, don't wish to be part of the parish, that's fine. We, I think we're going to still grow because there's going to be a lot of building going on around us here in the next few years. So we'll still grow as a parish. And, but I, I, w- I just I don't want to lose the momentum, the momentum that we have right now. We seem to be, we were heading in the right direction. And I would hope that things don't go backwards. So again, this is a request on my part. First of all, just to give you the information. But second, to say, if you know of people who are kind of wandering in their faith, that you know maybe this is your way to be Christ to them, to evangelize to them so that they can feel your love for Jesus and put that into their hearts and live that, live that life that you live. Uh, we've had a donation. We've had several donations that people have given money to us for COVID-19 purposes is what they are saying. And we've used a lot of that money to purchase groceries and we still do have the food bags out here that are the dinner in a bag. We've got probably 20 left. So if, you, if you're if you interested in picking one of those up for yourself or anybody else, please do so. If we don't give them away, we'll give them to Paul's Pantry or St. Vincent de Paul, something like that. But we've gotten... Lots of donations, and most recently, the Denmark State Bank, who does handle the banking for us here at Prince of Peace, sent us a $5,000 donation, which we are very grateful for, uh, for COVID-19 use. So the idea that we are kicking around right now is not to have a food pantry, but a food cupboard, meaning that we would have dry goods, you know, so we're not going to have meat or eggs or things that are perishable, but certainly boxed items and canned items, I think to the point where we want to make this a permanent part of our parish, that we can be a source for people, not just in our parish, but in the area who are struggling uh, to have food, that we can have people come out here and we can have a, a cupboard, of sorts, where we do have, uh, they can come through the line, pick up the needs, that, the food that they would need that we have, and uh, it's our way to be Christ to others and to to take this money that we have now gotten, and on top of the five thousand that Denmark State Bank has given us, we probably have somewhere around three thousand dollars additional. So this is a, I think this is a really good opportunity for us to be to expand what we do in the community to help others. So that's the idea that we have. I've run it by a few people. I think that they're going to help get it going. But if you're interested in helping, please call our office and you know ask for me and I can certainly get you on a list. And at some point, we'll probably have either a virtual meeting or maybe a call together to try to see how we can organize this. But it's a vision that I think is starting to come closer and closer as time goes on. And now that we have this kind of money to start it with, I think that this is something that we can do as a church community, as a parish community going forward to help others in our community, no matter where they are and, and what their need is, that we can help them. Because we have been live streaming for the last uh, is it eight weeks now, Director, producer, Tim, something like that. He's right behind me looking. He stares at me all the time, which is hard for me to look at. But we have now, uh, through the approval of our finance and parish council, 
have purchased permanent cameras, which we're going to install. And, you know, I'm sitting to the side of the altar here. There are two pillars that are kind of one on each side of the side, the front pews in the middle um, that they're going to be installed permanently on. They'll be able to swivel. They'll be uh, operated remotely. And we should be able, as time goes on, be able to superimpose words like uh, prayers on there. It, it can be really nice. We could use, we'll be able to use it not just for live streaming masses, but for weddings and funerals, for religious ed evenings that we have. What else? Oh, baptisms. He's, see, he's talking to me. Baptisms, yeah. I mean, a lot of different events that we have here. So I think it'll be very beneficial. Um, we won't live stream masses on Sunday going forward when we get back together. But during the week for people who are shut-ins, we can do that and we can show things later. So I think there'll be a lot of use for it. Um, but we are going to need people who want to be involved in the videography, uh, handling the cameras, being able to handle the, the computer skills there necessary. So if you're interested in something like that, I would ask that you either call Tim Decker, who you can't see right now, but he's right behind the camera, or to call our office, and I will, can get your information to Tim and, and get you in touch with him there. But if we can get maybe five or six people who are interested in doing that and have a, a sort of a team so that not he doesn't have to be here all the time. He's been here every time. The guy's been a trooper. But... Uh, but when we get these other cameras that have much, much more versatility to them than an iPad, I think we could use extra help. So if you're interested, please let our office know and, and uh, we'll get you in touch with Tim. Sunday, uh, well, let me go backwards. Tomorrow, first of all, we have Mass at 9 a.m. Father Ryan will be here tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. to hear confessions. Last week, um, he was here to pray for one hour by himself. I hope that's not the case tomorrow in the evening. I, I really hope that you can experience this sacrament. Um, I will tell you that I haven't been to the sacrament since sometime in Lent. And part of the reason is that Father Ryan will not hear my confession. He doesn't want to know if I'm doing something bad in the office that I want to confess. So um, I guess I understand his feeling. But it frustrates me that I can't just walk into the confessional and, and I have to find somebody else. So I I need to call another priest. I have other priests that can do that. So I need to get in there as well. But I have to call and arrange an appointment and go somewhere else. You can come right here, walk right in. And uh, there isn't probably a better confessor in the diocese to your sins than Father Ryan. Um, he in the person of Jesus, is just wonderful. So I hope you can experience this sacrament tomorrow evening. Sunday, we'll have Mass uh, live-streamed at 10 a.m. And he'll be again here hearing confessions at 11 a.m. We'll ring the bells at noon. And weather permitting, I'm, I'm looked ahead at the weather on Sunday, and it does not look very promising. It looks better than last Sunday, but last Sunday was... <laughs> last Sunday was about as bad as it could get. Um... We'd like to pray the rosary in the parking lot. We are going to like use chalk, make a huge rosary where everybody's socially distanced between the beads so we can have people on each bead to pray on our Father, a Hail Mary. Um, and I can lead. I'll lead the rosary if, if we are able to do it with weather. Um, so I'll lead with the mysteries and it'll be the glorious mysteries on Sunday. But I'm hoping we have enough people who will stay around after ringing the bells that we can pray the rosary, which will take, you know, less than 20 minutes to pray. Um, and I think it'll be a good experience for all of us. So if you family, if you have a family that you could bring or you want to come by yourself or whoever, and bring friends, I just think it, it's another way that we can create community. So if the weather is nice, we'll do it on Sunday. If it's not, we'll probably do it on May 31st, which is two weeks from Sunday. And that happens to be Pentecost Sunday as well. So we will probably do it that weekend. Uh, we'll skip Memorial Weekend just in case people are traveling. But um, another way to, to create community, another way to pray together, 
and to help us continue to ask Jesus for help as we go forward and ask for his, uh, his guidance, his healing for us and to end this pandemic as soon as he, according to his perfect will, decides. Okay, that's enough. I'm, I've gotten to see a few more people here that I haven't seen in a while, and it's been great. But I say this all the time, and I'll say it again. I miss having everybody here greatly. It just pains me to sit in this church alone um, and to hear my voice bounce off the walls versus having it filled and having smiling faces and people who are here for one common purpose, and that is to love Jesus, to serve him, and to receive him in the Eucharist and, and witness the Mass, what he has given us. So please continue to pray. Please continue to stay together as a parish family. If there's anything that you need from us, please don't hesitate to call. We're open every day from 8 to 4. This this church is open every day from 8 to 4, including weekends. So if you want to spend time in quiet prayer with Jesus, please, it's open to you. Uh, so until we talk on Saturday evening, we'll see you tomorrow morning if you would like to view the Mass. But please, stay safe, stay healthy, and may God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.